Welcome back to Carrie Moran's Book Radio Show, recorded live at the Writer's Junction in Santa Monica, California. And now, back to Carrie. I'm Carrie Moran. Welcome back to the Book Radio Show, right here on thebookradioshow.com. Joining me for Chapter 2 tonight on Book Radio is award-winning Broadway stage and TV actress Karen Kondasian. Please welcome Karen. Karen's new book is entitled The Whip, and boy, oh boy, what a book it is. Congratulations, by the way, on The Whip, your first novel, which just made the cover of Publishers Weekly. That's like making the cover of The Wall Street Journal. Congratulations to you on that. That's fantastic. Now, Karen, I want to ask you, The Whip is based on the highly compelling, and I do mean compelling, and true story of Charlotte, actually Mary Charlotte, Charlie Darkey Parkhurst. That's yes. all of her name during all segments of her 67 years. And it's a true story. One of the Wild West's first, and she was really an amazing, she was the first notable stagecoach driver. She was born in 1812 in Providence, Rhode Island, where my mother was born, died in Watsonville in Northern California in 1879, and she was hired by an early version of the Wells Fargo Company when she was in her mid-30s after disguising herself as a man to get that job. She was a natural whip, as they call them, and not very much is known about her, but you artfully put meat on the bones, so to speak. So my first question is, how did you learn what I call the hidden history of Charlotte Charlie Parkhurst? Well, I was a young girl reading Cosmopolitan magazine, trying to get a man, and um, uh, there was an article in it about, uh, I think it was called Desperate Women of the Old West, Wild Women of the Old West, and I always loved the West. I loved horses. Mm -hmm. And there was this s story about this woman, and that she had been the first woman to vote in America as a man for General Grant, that she had... Uh, for president. As for president, yes. yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and that she had died of tongue cancer from smoking too many cigars and chewing too much chewing tobacco and... And the fascinating thing was is that for 30 years, she was this extraordinary California stagecoach driver. Nobody knew that she was a woman until she died. And as they were getting her ready her for her funeral, preparing her body, suddenly all the doctors from all over Watsonville and all over came, oh my God, it's a woman. And she had had a child. They did an... They, you know, discovered that she had also had a child. So we learn through your book that Charlie's amazingly, and I do mean this, amazingly difficult beginnings as a foundling yes. eventually take on her on a very incredible oceanic odyssey from her roots in Rhode Island, halfway around the world through the Panama Canal to the California Gold Rush country and Sacramento in the days just before California became the Golden State. And her key reason for going, as we learned through the whip, is revenge. Yes. Why did Charlotte decide that the only way to get that revenge was to transform herself into being a man? Well, first of all, uh, women had no choices in those days. You had three, maybe. Mm -hmm. uh, you could be mother prostitute if you had a little education, teacher. Mm -hmm. um, and you could not travel alone. Women couldn't have dreams. Only men could have dreams at that time. So, in my research, which is very interesting, there were a lot of women who were free spirits, like I am, and put on britches. <laughs> and, and, and that was the only way you could travel freely, you know, without being afraid of being raped or whatever. And so... She put on men's clothes to go out to California. The underground river stream of my book is this, this question. If someone destroyed horribly everything that you loved in this world, could you forgive them? And if you couldn't, how far would you go? To what ends? That's what my book is about. It's about survival and 
forgiveness really ultimately, which are kind of the big questions we all ask ourselves. It's also about what would happen, you know, if you are lying, if you've been through so much loss that you're lying face down, you know, spread eagle in manure, can you get yourself up? And if you can, several times over and over again, you know, how do you do that? How do we do that? You know, without giving too much away about your book, Karen, because we always want you to go and buy the book. So we don't want to give away all yeah, I won't tell you the But secrets. without giving too much away... <laughs> and there's a big secret in the book, too. We really bring home the notion that Charlie's inner womanhood never leaves her. She, as a he, falls in love for the second time in her hard and challenging life, and this time with a gambler who gets it about Charlie. Yes. I must say that you made this twist in the book very believable. You really did. It was, it was like, really? Oh, well, <laughs> yeah, I could see that happening. That was good. That was very good. One of the things that's so striking about Charlie's life is the brutality that she lived through. I mean, not only in her formative years, but also later when her true love and her infant daughter are killed, and she makes it to California. And she's driving a team of six horses over many miles of wilderness. And, you know, that obviously took a lot of stamina, after all, because, you know, she smoked like a chimney, and she drank like a sieve, and she swore like a sailor. How could someone do this uh, you know, driving a team of six horses artfully and becoming legendary and be able to physically take that stamina. The brutality of her life must have been, I mean, to make it 67 years is just astounding. Especially to me. 67 years in that time. Exactly. You know, that was like an old person. You know, the thing that fascinated me mostly and intrigued me to write the book was I thought to myself, how with all these macho male guys, how did she hide things like peeing on the trail, having her period, covering her body in a way that she wouldn't be found out? You know, because when she died, the newspapers, I read them, they, the men, her friends, couldn't believe it. They all got drunk. They, they said, oh, my God, you know. Charlie? It, it, Not Charlie. Charlie. Our, our pal. And she, and she was a mother. <laughs> you know, they couldn't believe it. But, you know, that fascinated me, too. Mm -hmm. of, of, you know, how she carried that off, and she did. And she lived to the ripe old age of, we say, 67. Yes, 67. She was a farmer. She was a rancher. She yes. took good care of her neighbors. She had a wonderful reputation. And she takes in a woman and her daughter at the very end yeah. of her life and has sort of a, a little mini family and then very tragically ends up just resolutely dying alone. 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 Yes. I know. And you write about that scene so artfully. I was like, oh, you know, no. I mean, it was one of those books, seriously, that no hyperbole involved. I was looking at it and reading it and going, oh, no. I was really emotionally involved. I highly recommend The Whip. And Karen Condazian, thank you so much for joining us thank here you. tonight on the Book Radio it was Show. Lovely. Thank you very Continued much. Continued success with The Whip. It's a cracking good story. And we might just see it on the big screen. Oh, wouldn't that be nice? Thank All you. right. Thanks very much. Paul Clint Eastwood, yes? <laughs> For more of the show, click on the link below.